When I left Vienna, uh, I stood at distance of a few meters and saw face to face the ill-famed Eichmann, E-I-C-H-M-A-N-N, -N, the man who was responsible for the whole Holocaust. And when I then arrived from a former camp to Auschwitz, I was one and a half meter distance face to face, again confronted with another historical, not to say classical, mass murderer. Not only Eichmann, but also uh, Mengele, Dr. Mengele. Now you see, next, Dr. Mengele standing there in Auschwitz at the railway station, uh, where he stood and we had to march one after the other, and he made such a movement, right or left, see? And this meant those who were sent to the left were immediately sent to and, end, to and into the gas chambers. And those who had been ordered to the right side, uh, which was the minority, <coughs> they were sent uh, later on, after a couple of days, into some camps, concentration camps in Germany. Mm. The next picture shows you the, what uh, remained from the poisoning gas containers, Cyclone B, what the poisoning gas that was used. This picture was made in, in Auschwitz, in the Auschwitz uh, Museum. Next, please. These are the ovens where the gas people had been uh, cremated. There was not a, a, a gas oven in which people died, but they, uh, they were gassed in gas chambers, uh, pressed about 1,000 in one sweep, pressed together naked, male and female together naked, and then, as I heard, you may understand with what feeling I heard it, from one of the former prisoners who had to work Oper and it op as an operator in the gas chambers, uh, it took the, in the prisoners 13 minutes to die. 13 minutes to die. Of course, they lost their consciousness earlier, but the, the, what is called in German, Todeskampf. Yeah. Yeah. The struggle with death. The struggle with death had the duration of 13 minutes. Now, the next, please. Yeah. This is a room where we were brought into the first, uh, the first in Auschwitz. It was a dis disinfection room. We had in this room, I believe I uh, said it in my book on the concentration camp, in this room we had within uh, one or two minutes to be freed of all, uh, stri stripped totally, and, uh, and uh, uh, in this room, we lost everything we had on ourselves, including any hair and so forth. And I lost in this situation the first manuscript of the book, The Doctor and the Soul, which I had done the afterwards uh, to the, the luck to be able to reconstruct it and to rewrite it finally. The next, please. These are, uh, you see, wooden things on which in three, on three levels, on each level, nine uh, prisoners had to lie. It was impossible to lie on the, the back, you had to lie only on one side. Nine prisoners. So in such a thing, there was the, uh, uh, altogether uh, 27 people okay, during the night. I had only to spend two nights to be sure. The next camp in which, to which I was transported was the camp Kaufering in Bavaria. And the next and last was Türkheim also in Bavaria. Let me uh, share with you two very uh, small and uh, seemingly at first sight unimportant uh, experiences I had. 
But to me, as uh, someone who has to do some connection, after all, with logotherapy, it, uh, they have a great meaning. Inasmuch as you might have come across some such statements, in logotherapy, in the anthropological foundations of logotherapy, that is to say where a logotherapy, the logotherapeutic concept of man, the, question, the answer to the question, what is intrinsically and basically the making, our, making for the humanness of any human being. We discern two things, two human capacities. The capacity of self-distancing and the capacity of self-transcending, of self-transcendence. And now I may illustrate it by two things that happened in the concentration camps. Uh, through, over the snow, the, the fields uh, uh, covered with snow and bitter cold, about uh, centigrades uh, uh, below the zero, uh, 18 centigrades. Early in the morning, around f about five o'clock, we had to march about three quarters of an hour to the site where we had to make heavy physical work, uh, constructing sub, uh, terrain, uh, sub supports. No, it's under, underground, underground, tunnels, yeah, and tunnels and underground uh, ammunition fabric bunkers, uh, manufacturers, yeah. And uh, you may easily imagine how triste the whole situation was. And then I started to play a trick upon myself by ordering myself to imagine I'm now standing behind a lectern in a large lecture hall, in a warm lecture hall, with in a confronted, being confronted with an interesting and attentively uh, listening audience. And I'm speaking about this topic about, uh, under the title uh, the psychology of concentration camps. And I'm talking exactly about the, what I right at that moment was e experiencing. And thereby, I put a distance between myself and the real situation. And I was detaching myself from the reality, the triste, absolutely triste reality, and thereby, <coughs> by trying to have to adopt or embrace a strictly scientific objective view to the situation, I put again, I uh, <coughs> obtained a distance to it. This was the capacity mobilizing, I was mobilizing the capacity of safe distancing. And then, half a year later, I was suffering from typhus, typhus exantimaticus in medical terms. And my fever was even be, be, uh, higher than uh, 40 centigrades. And I knew that there was immediate life danger collapsing, the vascular uh, system collapsing due to the fever. And a friend of mine, another inmate of the same camp in Bavaria, uh, stole in the office of the SS of that camp so small uh, uh, forms. And on the back, on the free back, I jotted down, even during night, keywords that should allow me, keywords partially by uh, short handwriting, keywords to enable me later on, if I survive, the reconstruction of the manuscript. 